Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Spartan Brawl. Hope you're having a decent day. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Sam, and we're back with another Iran brief. So, Sam, please go ahead. The floor is all yours. Sure. And uh, for people who may just be, you know, starting to listen to us or watch us, Iran brief is a segment that we try to, as quickly as possible, uh, cover everything related to Iran in terms of uh, politics and geopolitics and all that, internal, external, all of that. Today we have, we're going to talk about some internal development in terms of uh, regarding Iranian internal politics. Then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ongoing Iranian nuclear talks with the Western powers and Russia and China. And then in the end, we're going to talk about the specific developments that has happened in Iranian and Iranian foreign policy that involves other nations as well. Brilliant. So first of all, we just had the Iranian, uh, we recently had the Iranian presidential election where the head of Iranian judiciary, Ibrahim Raisi, was elected as the president. He's going to assume office in a couple of weeks. Uh, he, he's president-elect now. He resigned a week ago from as a head of judiciary. Uh, and now Mohsen Ejei, who is a, who's a famous person, I'm sure uh, uh, Kamyar will put the picture up. He's a very famous person in Iranian uh, judicial system. He's been a prosecutor, I think, of Tehran. He's been the spokesperson for the judiciary. He's, he's been involved in high-level political as well as high-level economic cases. There was a very famous case uh, very early, like 10 years after the revolution, the first major economic corruption case involving major figures from within the establishment of Iranian regime. And uh, he uh, was the judge there and he ordered the execution of one of the uh, corrupting, uh, one of the alleged people who were corrupt, Fazel Khodadat, who's very famous, was very famous at the time. He's been involved in a number of security cases. Uh, he's a very, he looks like a very tough man and he's got a, uh, he doesn't have a, a strong reputation for corruption or anything like that, but he does have a, a strong reputation for, uh, for being harsh, basically. He's, a, you know, he's, he's likely to, as a head of ju- judiciary, he's likely to be tougher than, than Ibrahim Raisi. Although, although I've, I mean, this is my analysis right now, people usually tend to, like Iran, Iran, Iranian judiciary has been getting better and better and more responsive as time has gone by. So I would assume he would continue the trend. I doubt he's going to be somebody who, uh, you know, causes major shifts in, or major changes, but he may be a bit tougher than before, uh, than Ibrahim Raisi himself. So that was a major development in terms of Iranian politics. So Mohsen Ejei is now the Iranian head of judiciary. Uh, you also had uh, a couple of other uh, events which are very important. Iranian, uh, there, there are major strike across Iran. Iranian labor, uh, laborers are striking people who are, it has started from people who are active in uh, oil sector and petrochemicals but it has a spread to a lot of different sectors, even some lawyers, the, the major guild of lawyers, guild or union, I don't know, of lawyers uh, has uh, backed the strikes. The strikes has not, not significantly, not in a major way, but the strikes has led to fuel shortage in certain places. Apparently it's been reported, but nothing major yet. Uh, and they are basically the labor uh, representatives. They are very upset about the fact that there seems to be no pay rise for their uh, for the new year, and uh, for the fact that there are all these details that uh, we can get into if people like comment and you know let us know. But there are all these details regarding the contracts and the people who are on short term contracts and contractors who according to some, do perform the most dangerous jobs, but they have the least amount of job security and uh, money uh, paid to them. 
So uh, these unrests are basically shaking Iran, and uh, but the president Rouhani, the blame duck president, you can say, he's uh, promised to resolve the issues, and uh, it's a budgetary issue, so they're going to resolve it. We'll see, we'll see. But the strikes are on and off going on, uh, basically, and increasingly people are uh, defending them. So you had. Uh, you know, th these things happen in Iran. There is an increase, sadly, in uh, crime in general in terms of uh, people just breaking in, burglaries, that type of thing. So poverty in Iran, which in my view is largely due to the sanctions, uh, unfair sanctions, uh, is just skyrocketed. And now it's showing its true face in terms of crime and all that. At the same time, you have people traveling to Armenia to get vaccinated because there is a vaccine shortage. It's it's the vac vaccination rollout has been a disaster. Uh, Iranian government has not managed to, uh, like you know, people go get you know there are times given appointments are made and then people show up and then uh, there is no vaccine. So again, I, th I think sanctions play a big role with that, not to excuse the officials, by the way, and their incompetencies, but uh, yeah, it's been a very, uh, internally, Iran has been dealing with large number of issues from, you know, all, you know, you got the strikes, you got this vaccination issue. Oh, and there, besides the new head of judiciary, there was this last minute, uh, basically, it's uh, I don't know how should I say it specifically, but it's a it's a what guideline let's say passed by the judiciary about the lawyers about the way lawyers uh, licensing is done. But according to the constitution, the judiciary does not have the authority to regulate lawyers. So the lawyers union guild whatever they are opposing this. So. Uh, it's a whole of a like a lot of different messes happening at the same time in terms of uh, Iran. A lot of like Iranian labor and guilds are basically very much um, uh, standing, uh, have problems with the current policies. So those are happening internally. Uh, now we can move on. Any questions about? these stuff or should I just move on to the nuclear talks? No, very interesting. Please continue. Sure. All right. Um, now, regarding the nuclear talks, there were a couple of updates, but I, I my analysis overall, just I'm going to give you a brief one, is that uh, I think the talks are pretty much on hold until the new president. Yeah, you had the report by Reuters that Iran is not is not a simply basically they've said it out they said until there's a new deal we are not going to give you access to the tapes to the because as we discussed before there was an interim deal where the inspectors couldn't access certain places but there would be video cameras recording everything and all that and iran has said they're not going to give access to these recordings until the deal is revived somehow like one way or another that's uh one major, that was major development. Uh, you also had, uh, at the same time, US, uh, what do you say? They, uh, they de-sanctioned three people, three Iranians. Uh, they took the sanctions off of them. Uh, so that, was a, that, that seemed to be in line with reports that US is uh, thinking about removing sanctions on Iranian businessmen or Iranians re related to the supreme leader and all that. Sorry, I have so a question that was there. Added. So uh, last yeah. week, I think you also mentioned a few people whose sanctions were removed off them. These are different people? No, no. Last week, we reported that there, there are reports that US is considering removing sanctions on supreme leader's office. Yes, yes, true. And now these people, I don't know. Uh, I couldn't find a specific mm -hmm. relations between these people and the Supreme Leader's office yet, uh, but uh, it, could, it could, there could be, there could okay. be one. And they hadn't and removed way, sanctions sorry, I, I, on anyone else in the past week or two that we had mentioned recovered. It was just the Supreme Leader's sorry? office. There wasn't anybody else that they had removed sanctions from 
the past few weeks it was just the supreme leader's office that they were considering they didn't they didn't yeah, i know they, they, they didn't, didn't. okay yeah. they there were reports they're considering uh last few weeks besides these three people that i read about yesterday i haven't heard of okay no but there were reports that the us is uh, you know supporting the uh, the stunks or whatever it's called the no the stunks was the virus sorry mm. the, the, there is a f- financial system that is set up by europe during yes, trump yes. years to send money to iran somehow for for goods or whatever. yeah 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 so they're supporting that there, there are some things there are some positive signs and by the way so i made a mistake reuters uh, uh, uh reported that after there was explosions about a month ago in natanz iran limited the access of inspectors even further that's what reuters reported cnn reported that Iran, there are reports that Iran has said that they're not going to give access to those recordings until the deal is revived. And uh, uh, so, sorry about that. Right. I, that was and my Natanz mistake. is a uh, huge nuclear energy site. It's like the main nuclear energy site in Iran. I don't, to be honest, I really don't know, but it's one of the major yeah, n- nuclear and there facilities was an incident in Iran. There, yeah, there was an incident there a month yeah, ago, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there has been a number of incidents there, but there was one recent, very recently. And uh, so, yeah, but, but on the positive sides, then we had U.S. removing the sanctions from these people. Interestingly, the head of Israeli army came out and said that I talked to all my counterparts across the world and they all agree that Iranian, going back to Iranian nuclear year or even going back to a nuclear year that is a slightly better or a slightly more comprehensive is a bad geopolitical move. So Israel, again, made it clear that they're not happy with this. Iran, uh, Iran has been getting a bit harsher in its tone and now has said it clearly that they, wanna, they want the sanctions to be removed. And I mean, to be fair, I think this was Iran's position from beginning. They said we want the sanctions to be removed and we want guarantee this time that America can't uh, renegade and uh, can't go back on the deal. B- b- but uh, they weren't so aggressive about it. Now they're more aggressive about this point. And the uh, Western media is saying, oh, Iran is putting on new conditions, uh, which uh, even if it's a new condition, I think fair enough considering yeah. what happened. Uh, so, I mean, maybe I am biased. Uh, but but uh, so Iran is saying that. And then at the same time, you had, lo- interestingly, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, came out and said that there are demands being made of Iran that are far beyond what is in the original deal, deal or what is uh, related to the original deal, the, the demands that are being made from Iran. Are they missile related? So, um, I- it does. It doesn't go into specifics, mm-hmm. but I think yeah, probably missile and Hezbollah and all that related. And uh, yeah, I, again, uh, I w- I'm, I'm, I'm on the Iranian side. I think Iran has is uh, ha- Iran's argument has more. You know, they yeah. are on the right in this one, but but I would say. Uh, until the U.S. and Iran, both sides, as Trito Parsi, uh, one of the foremost experts on the matter said until they come to a like a comprehensive understanding whatever you want to call that it written deal or just the handshake uh, like in a yacht or something uh, about the region uh, you know the resolving of issues seems to be unlikely because fundamentally the interests clashing right now so sadly uh, yeah, sadly, I don't think any, anything important is going to happen for the next couple of weeks. And then the new administration is going to be harsher, but who knows? But they, they do have more power than last administration. So we'll see. And August is summertime in Europe anyway. So I think everybody can pick everything back up in September. Probably Fair. at this rate. <laughs> So if no more questions about this, uh, yeah. I can uh, move on to uh, uh, the other The ship stuff. incident you were saying, right? Yes, yes. There was an attack on a ship in the Indian Ocean uh, near, uh, it's, it's near 
Iran, but you know, uh, we'll, we'll you'll see the map and all that. But uh, the ship, uh, the ship was flying the Liberian flag. It's owned by a British company in London, apparently. But originally, Al Mayaden, which is a a Lebanese channel affiliated with Hezbollah reported that it was an Israeli ship that was attacked and uh, there were strikes on the ship and then there was an explosion. Then there was all these reports that Israeli uh, officials were reporting in the Israeli newspapers that Israelis considering or investigating whether Iran was behind the attack. But because there was a couple of, there was an attack near Tanzania a couple of months ago in the Indian Ocean again, I think that was also, uh, the Israelis claimed Iran may have been behind. And then uh, it, uh, you had reports f- from Israel that uh, they basically, uh, I think it was her, Israel, possibly, it went from possibly attacked by Iranians mm-hmm. to, yes, this is from uh, Haaretz, which is a pretty good, apparently, yeah. um, uh, outlet. Uh, Israeli officials say Iran behind Indian Ocean attack on cargo ship. So that's the, so it went from possible Iranian to definitely Iran is behind it. Then today uh, it turned out that uh, the, this uh, ship apparently w- was not Israeli at all. Like it was sold a couple of months ago to, and had no Israeli connection. So it wasn't an Israeli ship. So it wouldn't make sense for Iran to attack it anymore. <laughs> So it's an evolving story. By the way, I forgot to give a quick breakdown. The ship was going from Saudi Arabia, Jeddah, sort of going the, all the way around to uh, UAE. Uh, it was a cargo ship. And now, yeah, originally it was said that it was owned by Zodiac uh, company, uh, who be, which belongs to Eyal Ofer, Israeli merchant. Uh, but but now apparently that's been denied, and uh, yeah. But they, I mean, apparently they, they they the Israeli company sold the ship a couple mm-hmm. of months ago, basically. That's interesting. And but uh, do they still think that there were attacks, or even is that like did something did happen to that ship or not? Or... There was an explosion for okay, sure. There was an explosion. But, yeah, yeah, there was an explosion yeah. for sure. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I really, I this just came in. So but, yeah, so they're saying it explosion really now. Was, do they still ready... say? Yeah, yeah the they... explosion definitely happened. But do they say strikes they, I mean, still or like... anything like that? Or it's just kind of more vague now? No, no, they still say it's attack. Okay. They still say it's attack. I just sorry, I just checked the BBC. But yeah, they still characterize it as an attack. But no, no, it, it's just, just because until this morning, it was a completely different, like, it, yeah. yeah. Maybe, they, to be fair, it is possible that they thought it was Israeli. It is definitely possible. But um, yeah, it's definitely possible that it's a false flag either. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we'll see. But um, yeah, that was the that was the interesting one. And you also had a report by Washington Post, which I think is important to highlight, because recently you had the airstrikes by Biden, uh, illegal airstrikes in Syria and Iraq on Iranian, Iranian affiliated targets, whatever they want to call them. And uh, yeah, Washington Post apparently reported that with much glee that, uh, yeah, Biden administration has far less uh, uh, patience for Iranian or Iranian-backed activities in the region, or for uh, militia for militia activities in the in Iraq and Syria. So yeah, wa- Washington Post again showing it's real. I mean, to be fair, most uh, national newspapers in most countries, you go yeah. to China Daily or whatever, Global Daily or whatever it's called, they tend to support the government. So it's not a surprise, but this this thing, this you know, oh no, we are journalists, we yeah. are not. <laughs> ah, fuck off. Anyway, sorry. That was just the add-on. Yeah, that was a little extra for <laughs> <Okay>. me. <laughs> no, great stuff. Great stuff. Covered everything from domestic to some foreign policy related to Iran. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no. Any, no. If you don't have anything, okay. no. Really sorry was... about rambling on. No, no. I think it was good overall. <laughs> uh, given how it usually is, I think it was all good. But okay, people, if you have some comments, questions, criticisms. <laughs> please leave them below and I'll make sure that Sam gets to them. If not, please like and subscribe to this video and we'll see you in our next video. Thank you.
Go ahead. A, one caveat, a lot of comments regarding Iran apparently gets deleted on our Iran videos and stuff because sometimes I get a notification, but I can't find a comment yeah. to reply to or stuff. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Yeah, blame YouTube for that. Okay, well, thank you. See you in our next video.